Hi, good morning, everyone. Are you able to hear me clearly and see me? Give me a thumbs up uh, on the panel on the right side if you're able to hear me. Hey, fellas, yeah, we can hear you. Okay, good, awesome. So a very good morning to all of the students, parents, mentor, my fellow teams, and everyone who is present on this call. As you know, we are live on YouTube and you can watch us, your family can watch us, uh, both the opening ceremony and the closing ceremony on YouTube from the comfort of your home. I hope you have an awesome hackathon today and you have a very good experience. While we wait, uh, there's a rifle pri raffle prize which was uh, done and you can go ahead and fill your uh, nominations over there. The link uh, I would go ahead and provide in the chat window. You can finish the uh, nominations for that. Thanks to all the sponsors who have helped us. Um, Let's go, Kishido, Bugsy, Full Palm Language, Balsamic. Very thanks to all the generous donations uh, from all these organizations. Would you like to go ahead and give a brief uh, overview on the Net Scout? Are you, are you going to show slides? Are you able to see the screen? Yeah. Mm, no, we are, we are only seeing the first screen. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So uh, we are we are kind of um, starting off, right? Right. Are we? How many kids do we have? Do we have here on the call? Webex. We have 101 participation, uh, 91 attendees. 91 attendees, okay. So the very first thing is uh, team, uh, if your teammates are not on the Webex, please go ahead and ping them to come to the Webex. I mean, a lot of information is going to be shared here with respect to the hackathon, with respect to what is going to happen today. So we would really like all participants to attend this Webex, uh, the master Webex, which is the opening ceremony that Shai announced. And um, after it's about for, for about an hour, they, this will go on for about an hour uh, with a lot of information. There's going to be very exciting keynote speakers that you could drive uh, inspiration off of and a lot more information about the hackathon, about NetScout, about shooting stars, and you know where you could go with it. Um, so I would really uh, recommend that, you know, uh, please ping your friends to uh, come to the WebEx and we will um, start the opening ceremony momentarily. And uh, feel free to chat in the chat window if you are some of I, I know that some of you had put in uh, your teammates were not there. So the organizers are trying to ping them and get them to come to Discord as well as the WebEx. So hopefully by the time in a few minutes, they will all be there. Okay, so um, my name is Lata Narayanan. Uh, I manage the IT applications at NetScout Systems. Uh, you heard from uh, Shailesh. Um, Shailesh is from the engineering department uh, from NetScout Systems, and um, he develops a lot of products for NetScout. I manage the all the backend systems for NetScout. Um, you've heard a lot about NetScout in the past few weeks uh, because of all the emails you've been getting. Um, so NetScout uh, is a technology company. Uh, it is headquartered in uh, Boston, Massachusetts, and uh, we are about a uh, 3,000 people employee company and uh, with a revenue of about 900 million uh, per year, right? So I don't know how many of you, so the very first thing whenever you go to a 
event or you're going to attend an event, the very first thing is go Google. Google is God now, right? You have to go Google. What is the company about? What are they doing, right? So uh, most of you may have already done that and maybe knowing what NetScout does. But for those who did not, here is a very quick uh, introduction of what NetScout is, what we do, how does it apply to you know what you're doing in your daily life. Um, so we pride ourselves in calling guardians of the connected world. So um, as you know, the world is completely connected. I mean, in a sad note, even with COVID, we are completely globally interconnected. So um, in the connected world, of course, the most important thread of connection is the network, right? So everything is connected today. Uh, your cell phones are connected, your laptops are connected. Um, yeah, now uh, there's a big thing about Internet of, Connect <coughs> Internet of Things, where all your gadgets, including your refrigerators, your doorbell, your cameras, everything is interconnected in this world. And again, as I said, the common thread is network to connect all of those. Now, this network has to function properly. This network has to function optimally. This network cannot drop. This network has to you know, perform at the speed that you want to. And that's where NetScout comes in. NetScout produces a lot of hardware and software that makes sure that monitors all these networks the performance, it makes sure, uh, you know, the uh, uh, performance is optimal and the packets, we call the data packets that flow through the network to, co to connect from one, P one point to the other. Uh, these products make sure that those packets travel seamlessly through the network. And that's exactly what NetScout does. And again, as I told you, this network is pervasive, right? Let's take the COVID example. A lot of hospitals, a lot of patients, and there is there has to be a lot of interconnection in, in actually sending the medical reports from one place. Take the case of Wall Street, uh, the stock trading, right? So you're, you're putting in an order. That order has to go in milliseconds to uh, Wall Street to buy your trade. Um, and take the take the concept of this, this communication, what we are doing right now, right? Uh, we are doing it in WebEx. Uh, this is a perfect example. We used to do these hackathons in person. Now, all of you are at home at different places in US, actually in different places in the world, and you are able to immediately uh, receive this. So that, that communication, your cell phone, you, you don't want streaming in your cell phone. You don't want voice call in your cell phone to be slow. And all of these is the network. And that's exactly where we fit in our products into that network, monitor it. If there is an issue, it will alert the folks and so that they can go fix it or it will automatically fix it. So that's the main set of products. And the secondary set of products is a lot of security products to secure a network. Um, again, you know, so we, at this point, NetScout is a leader in the service, service assurance industry. Uh, we, are, we are the leader in the market for such kind of industry. We're expanding into several markets. We've, we've had 100 plus man years of uh, experience in this. Again, you know, our offices, we have about 30 plus offices internationally and 2,500 to 3,000 people. So it's a really huge company and we would like you to join <laughs> once you finish your um, uh, degree. Um, now, today, actually, this hackathon is conducted by two organizations, right? So one is NetScout and the other is Shooting Stars Foundation. And this is very relevant to you high schoolers. So Shooting Stars Foundation is um, was started by high schoolers and um, you know, run by high schoolers um, and they conduct. So we have a number of high school officers who are running this today. And the um, goal of this organization is twofold. Uh, one is to fund educational scholarships for kids who can't afford it throughout the world. And number two is uh, provide educational support inside the US for low income neighborhoods, right? So, and then we, we conduct a lot of these kind of activities to do the fundraising. Next slide, please. Shailesh, yeah, thank you. So from a Shooting Stars perspective, uh, you know, we've had several camps, fundraising camps, uh, and we have several camp participants, about 1,200. Uh, we uh, sponsor about 170 uh, students for college all around the world. So if you see the bullet points there or the spots there, these, these are all the countries where, um, where students are supported. Six school leaders run this organization. So, you know, if you're interested, you can definitely check it out. We have a volunteer application form in the website and you can check it out. Uh, we operate out of 10 US chapters. 
and our scholars are from eight different countries. So that's about Shooting Stars. As I told you, Shooting Stars and NetScout are partnering to conduct this hackathon. Next slide, please. Okay, so what is a hackathon? I'm very sure the hundred plus people uh, who have uh, who are now attending, we actually got 140 registrations, and I guess about 100, 105 of you are going to do the hackathon today. I'm pretty sure you all know what a hackathon is. So maybe you know for the for the benefit of the other folks in the call here, I'll just give very give you a very brief introduction of what an actual hackathon is. Um, a hackathon is something that, you know, a group of people come together and you create a website or an app or an application in one day. There are several kinds of hackathons. There's like 24 hour hackathon, 36, 48 hour hackathon. This hackathon today is going to be 12 hours, supposed to be 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. PST. Within that one day, you'll be forming teams. You'll be ideating, uh, and Shailesh uh, will, uh, will tell the theme in a short while. You'll be ideating with respect to a specific topic or a specific theme, come up with a project, come up with a project plan, come up with an idea that will that is executable, and then start coding. And you could use any kind of coding you want. You know, at the end of the day, the goal is to pitch your product, like why is it important? Why do you need this? and also parallelly show a demo of something that you created. We want everybody to participate. There's different levels of people who are attending today, and it's okay. In some cases, you may not be able to complete, but the thought process comes. So, you know, just keep... So that's exactly what a definition of a hackathon is. With NetScout and Shooting Stars, we have conducted about six hackathons till date over the past two, three years. Uh, can you go back, uh, uh, Shailesh, one, one back, please, very quickly? Yeah, so we've completed about six hackathons. It's always been middle and high school students. This is our very first all girls hackathon. And uh, we've done these hackathons in uh, San Jose, Boston, Dallas, uh, Bangalore, and India. Of course, we did plan a lot more this year for in-person hackathons. And you, what we all know that's not going to be possible, at least for this year. So this is our very first online hackathon. So we are learning as we go and we invite you to learn with us, but we're all excited for today. Slide, please. Shailesh? Yes, Lord. Yeah, go ahead, Shailesh. Take it on. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, you want to you want to go ahead with this, Shailesh? I think you're. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah, no, you're fine. You're fine. Okay. <laughs> So we had uh, been having this online webinar things from past four weeks where we had the first webinar as how to win a hackathon by Dr. Sriram, who gave us an uh, overview of how the hackathons are, how should you participate and how should you go ahead and present in a part hackathon, what your ideation should be. So he gave us a brief introduction um, on the process of hackathon. Second week we had uh, an overview on HTML. It was the introduction uh, on HTML. How should you make web pages? What should you go about it? Third week, we had a program on JavaScript where uh, we talked about uh, how we can improve the web pages by using JavaScript. We can make our website more intuitive. And last week on Thursday, we had uh, a session on how to page, how to use Discord for hackathons. So from past four weeks, we have been engaging students to make sure they uh, know how to attend a hackathon, what should be prepped for the hackathon, improve their uh, baseline on their software skills. And on, on average, we have been receiving around 70 students. So we had a great participation uh, going on, and I hope the students liked it. So, this is the slide about the well, things we did. So let me go ahead and start you with the schedule. So as you know, the registration started at 7, 7.15, the registration is now closed. Uh, we'll have our uh, keynote speaker. The first keynote speaker is Debbie Briggs. She is our uh, CSO. She'll be sharing experiences, followed uh, by Debbie would be Ali Huang. Ali Huang is a bio um, 
technology entrepreneur. She's a PhD from MIT. She will share her experiences. Uh, at 8.30, we'll walk you through the rules of hackathon. Uh, what are the rules of hackathon? How should you be conducting uh, the hackathon? How you should behave? What should the presentation be like? What are the topics and things like that? At nine o'clock, we move to Discord. Discord is the collaboration channel which we are using today. So all our talks, all our collaboration with the team happens on Discord. We uh, join our ideas on Discord. We talk to the teammates on Discord. We have mentors. We have around 30 people who are volunteering for today's event. Thanks to them. Uh, they are volunteering today. And uh, you can go ahead and reach out to the mentors uh in the discord itself there'll be a, a channel created separately for mentors you can go ahead go to the particular room uh ping your mentor ask him if you have any doubts uh, if you have doubts in the ideation creation process or any other process where you feel stuck you can go ahead and reach out to a mentor there's a mentor uh, with uh, a specific uh, background i think waiting to help you out At 11.45, you can take a break from your uh, hacking session. You can play some puzzles. We'll have uh, some puzzles for you. We'll send you out the links where you can go ahead and watch the videos and fill the forms and let us know. There'll be some uh, prizes given out for the puzzle winners uh, throughout the day. So keep a lookout at your Discord channel announcements for uh, details on how to play the puzzles. You can always look at the dashboard. I'll come to the dashboard later uh, in the next slide. And uh, at around 3 o'clock, uh, you will have a, a demo on pitch and presentation. So uh, if you have missed out on the previous demos, uh, Dr. Sriram would go ahead and give you a brief introduction on how to pitch and present your ideas before the judge, the, before the judges. So. Uh, it's like a refresher course. Uh, you're you're welcome to attend that course at around three o'clock. Four thirty is the deadline to submit your code, and uh, make sure you uh, submit your code in the folders uh, in the Google folders which are assigned to you. Uh, make sure you put your uh, code, your presentation, your demo, all your things which are required. Uh, to be submitted are in the particular folders or the folders which contain your team names. And 4.30 sharp is when judging begins. So you would be allotted a room number based on your team. And you can go ahead, log into that particular WebEx. The details of the WebEx will be given in the dashboard. Dashboard is one stop shop for all the communication. Make sure you keep having a look at the dashboard. Uh, make sure. Uh, you follow the instructions given in the dashboards. We'll be providing you information on the Discord channel as well. But dashboard is one place where you can just go ahead and you know, keep all the information in one place. So 4.30 to, to 6 o'clock is our judging time, where you would go ahead and present, the, um, present your uh, journey. Six o'clock is when we have the participation survey. It is mandatory for everybody to fill out the participation survey. Otherwise, they'll not be awarding you prizes. That's a mandate from Lata. So six to six thirty, we have a open mic where you can come here uh, on the main WebEx channel and share your experiences with us. We'll have an open mic, as I said, and you are more than welcome to come and share your experiences. 6.30 onwards, we'll have our uh, prize announcement and the closing ceremony. So this is the schedule for the entire day. If you have any questions, please uh, do post your questions on the uh, question panel over here. You can also reach out, reach us at uh, Discord and uh, keep a look at the dashboard. So uh, the first speaker for the day today is uh, Debbie. Uh, 
Debbie's currently working as our uh, CSO. She is the chief security officer. Like Lata mentioned, uh, we consider ourselves as the guardians of uh, the network, and uh, she is uh, she's our chief guardian, you can say. She brings with her more than 25 years of experience in IT industry and information security. So without further ado, I'll, I'll make uh, her do the presentation. Thank you, Debbie. Um, I'll make you the presenter now. Good morning. I can't hear everybody, but I'm envisioning like a hundred girls' voices coming back at me going, good morning. I cannot believe that uh, this many girls got up on a Saturday morning uh, to, to, to join us here. So first of all, um, I am just switching and I'm sharing. Uh, Latha, can you see my slides? Yes. All right. So thank you for that introduction, Latha. Thank you for um, asking me to do this. I'm really excited to be here. I think uh, just listening to what you guys will be doing over the next 12 hours is amazing. And I wished when I was your age, there were these opportunities out there for me. Um, I think what's important is I wanted to, first of all, welcome you here, make sure that, um, you know, even if you're feeling like maybe this isn't the right place for you, I don't know how to code that much, it is the right place for you. Um, we're happy you're here, even if it's virtually at NetScout. Um, what you'll learn today is super important. Um, you're going to learn some skills, but you're also going to learn, you know, how to, to interact with people, how to take a common problem and solve something. And that will help you no matter what you do in your life. Um, you know, you can help protect the connected world. You can help make it a better place to be. And technology needs girls. Um, I mean, I, 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 you know, Latha, I, I didn't hear everything you were saying. Um, but I mean, I think any girl knows this is we need more girls in technology. There aren't enough of us um, in technology. Only one in five workers are typically girls. That means that we're only making up 20% of the technology jobs, um, but we make up at least 50% of the um, population. So we're hoping that having this, this hackathon with you all here today is going to spark some interest in you. And one of the things that I sort of wanted to share with you is, you know, when, when I was your age, the job I have right now didn't even exist. So, I mean, the world is anything you want to make of it. So, you know, where you actually end up in your career, the job may not even exist today. It may be being evolving as technology continues to advance um, and take us further and further um, into the future. I mean, if you know, we had had this event in January and we had said, oh, you know, a pandemic's going to hit and we're, <laughs> we're all going to be doing school remotely and working from um, home remotely, we would have all been like, yeah, that's not going to happen. But, but it did happen. And so well, there are a lot of new opportunities that are out there for you know, this new event that's happening for us. Um, I will tell you, being, you know, a female in technology, uh, every day isn't going to be easy. Um, it's easier than when Latha and I started, because when we started, um, we may have been the only uh, girl in the engineering class or the IT computer class. Um, and nowadays, um, there's, there's so many more of you. Um, so, you know, lean on each other, lean into each other, um, enjoy yourself today. I mean, take chances, um, you know, try as many things as you can, because, you know, I, I can tell you what I thought I wanted to be in life. Um, I was in my fourth year of college and I went, I don't want to do this. Um, you know, and I adapted um, with a computer science degree um, and you know, I decided in my senior year, I didn't want to code. That's going to shock Latha that I uh, actually did computer programming. Um, <laughs> and I wanted to, to evolve into, you know, PCs and networks. And so, you know, I learned how to support PCs. I used to be a shy person. I, I know you're probably like, really? Um, I was so shy. Um, but I learned to come out of my shell. I learned um, when I was supporting PCs, how to support users and talk to people and feel comfortable with it. And after that, um, I started teaching classes. And now I love to talk in front of a room full of people. And I can't imagine um, when I was in high school or even college, if someone said, 
oh, you have to take a public speaking class and, and give speeches, I would have been like, oh, no, I don't have to do that. Um, but now I love doing it. So even though something makes you feel uncomfortable, doesn't mean that if you don't try it a couple times, you won't become comfortable with it. Um, and there are going to be people along the way. Um, I mean, I'm just going to, you know, I remember, I still remember this to this day. And we're talking, I've been out of high school for decades. Um, you know, I was taking a calculus class and my teacher sort of pulled me aside one day and he's like, what do you want to be? And I'm like, well, I think I want to take computer programming. And he's like, you know, I think you'd be better at accounting uh, because I struggled to learn um, calculus from him. I went off to college, got a new calculus teacher, and I got an A in the class. So even if something doesn't come easily to you the first time, it could be the way someone is teaching it to you. You may need to hear it a different way. So don't lose faith. Um, and there are so many cool things that you can do out there today. Um, cybersecurity, the job I'm in and the role I'm in, didn't exist, you know, 30 years ago. And I can tell you right now, there are Ooh, thousands of open jobs that we can't find people for in cybersecurity. And, you know, why do we need to learn this stuff? Well, first of all, you can make the world a better place. You can help create the future. Um, girl power is positive power. Um, you know, one of my favorite things is working together is teamwork makes the dream work. And you can be a superhero that makes a difference. Um, I'm just going to pause here for just a second. Latha, um, did you want to add anything to, you know, why they would want to learn this stuff? Um, no, you are doing great. Go ahead, Debbie. Okay. Um, and I know Allie's up next. And I have to tell you, I'm, I'm glad I spoke first because I don't think I could compete with a PhD from, from MIT. Um, but let me, you know, just to, to give you a little sense about, you know, how I ended up in cybersecurity. So I did graduate college, went there for four years um, with a degree in computer science. Um, when I started college, I thought I was going to be a computer programmer. Um, the fourth year, I, you know, first of all, computer programming labs, when I went to school, were in the basement of the library. So it was dark and, you know, it smelled funny. Um, they aren't like that today. Um, and I just didn't want to, I was like, I don't want to program and be by myself all day. Um, you know, nowadays they have collaborative teams and you work with teams, um, and you're not in a cube all by yourself. Um, but like I said, I started to support PCs and as technology continued to, to advance, I raised my hand and said, oh, we, we need to get this thing called email up. Okay. I'll do that. And okay, yeah, it needs to run on a server. Well, we'll learn that. And then, you know, once I knew email and the server, I wanted to know how things were connected. And I was like, oh, that's networking. I raised my hand again and said, oh, I'll learn that. And, you know, as I got into, you know, networking and I knew about servers, you know, the world had started to change. And, you know, there was this cybersecurity, you know, keeping the data that's out on the internet or on your servers protected, um, that started to come, you know, into, you know, a job. And again, I stuck my hand up and said, oh, I want to do that. So it really speaks to, you know, where I thought I would be when I was in high school or middle school or even the start of college. The job I have now is even what I didn't even exist. And I don't think I'd be here if I didn't take risks. I didn't raise my hand up and, and say, well, let me try it. There, I will tell you, um, I there, I have failed. I, I don't think, you know, any person who's been successful that you can put your hand up and say, um, you, no one would be able to say, I've succeeded, but I've never failed. I think, you know, the, you know, you failure can be a, a, a positive thing if you learn something from it. So if, you know, you had a failure or, you know, you failed a test or something isn't coming easy to you, you know, that doesn't mean that you can't do it. And if you do fail, you have to just take a, take a step back and say, you know, what did I learn from this and, and move forward? So there there is success um, in learning um, from, you know, a failure or something that didn't quite work right. So. 
today while you're trying to solve and do this hackathon, you might hit a roadblock or you might be, it, you know, don't even know where to go from there. Well, you've got some great mentors that you can reach out to. You definitely want to reach out to them. They're there to help you um, and they can help you find a way forward. Um, and I have to tell you, um, my son is 22, but when he was in middle school, I actually raised my hand and said, oh, I'll, I'll help you. And I said I would be a, um, a coach for the uh, first robotics Lego League. I didn't know anything about robotics, um, but I was like, you know, there were a group of young kids that wanted to do this and they needed a coach. So I stepped up. I learned a lot about it. I learned a lot about the kids. And one of the things, and it's very similar to what you're doing today, is they were given a problem to solve. And to the one thing I remembered about it is the problem they had to solve is how to make the movement of people safer. And that was the only problem. And they didn't tell you how to solve it. It didn't matter if it was the movement of people um, or products, like if it was a potato chip through the factory so that you knew, you know, what could you do to make sure that when the potato chip was made and it made it into the bag and made it to your house, that they were potato chips and not potato chip crumbs. Um, you know, you could choose whatever problem you want to solve from it. These young kids that I was coaching um, decided they wanted to create a car of the future and they wanted the car to be able to park itself and to automatically brake if the car in front of it broke, you know, applied its brake. And that was 12 years ago. Those things weren't out 12 years ago. And nowadays you buy a new car and it's got park assist and it, it, it parks a car. And if the person in front of you puts their brakes on, um, you know, it, your car automatically reacts and, and, and brakes also. So there are some really cool things that people of your age can think of that people that have some more years of experience automatically go, no, that wouldn't, no, that won't work. No, don't try that. We've tried that. It doesn't work. You can't listen to that. You know, you, you know, if you think something will work and it's a great idea, you know, push it forward and, you know, you know, it may take you a little while, but you can be a success. So one of the things I wanted to do in closing is, you know, here are some resources for you. So um, the first link, and I would assume lots of that they will have access to these slides if they wanted to. Um, the National Initiative for Cybersecurity Careers. So if you went there, you'd see how many jobs are open for people in cybersecurity. Palo Alto has some really cool um, um, uh, security campaigns for kids in cybersecurity. So if cybersecurity or even programming is something that you're interested in and want to learn more about, there are companies out there that have um, different campaigns and things that you can do. And the last two, um, the ones uh, is Girls Who Code. So there is actually a group called Girls Who Code that, do, does, that takes exactly what you're doing here and um, takes it to sort of the next level. Um, you know, they actually, you know, they have competitions where they go and code. And I brought, I put first in here because I know a number of you um, are middle school or high schoolers. Um, first actually starts about, you know, uh, fourth or fifth grade. I think there are some that start even younger, but you, it goes through middle school all the way through high school. And you start learning how to program, you know, a little uh, Lego robot. And then when you get to high school, yeah, there's no more Lego robot that you can buy off the shelf. You have to build it. Um, so you're taking each one of those skills that you're learning year after year and you're, and you're increasing it. And eventually after two years of using a, a Lego robot, they take that away and say, okay, now you know enough about coding and how to build that you should be able to build your robots from scratch. Um, you know, so um, I'm going to pause there. I know there's a couple of panel people. I know... I'm not sure if Allie is here yet, um, but wanted to know if anybody had any questions for me on the panel that you thought the girls might be interested in that I have not answered yet.
um i yeah so the kids can chat if you want quickly students you can go ahead and use the q a uh, question of your panel to see if, uh, if you want to post out any question to debbie give about one minute uh, and then to ali yeah so um so for so i actually i know a lot that you're out in california i i assume the girls are from all over the country um, I actually um, work in Westford, Mass, which is right outside of Boston, um, but I live in New Hampshire. So I'm actually, you know, in my, my home office up in New Hampshire. Um, and that's one of the great things about technology, because 10 years ago, we didn't have the ability to, to have web chats like this um, and get people together virtually. So just think of that technology. Think of the technology and self-driving cars and all the things that the type of people and the type of developers that they're going to need. Um, you know, just a couple weeks ago, NASA launched a rocket um, to the International Space Station, and we haven't done that in years. So there's been a lot of firsts recently. Um, this past week, NASA renamed, um, I think it's its, it's headquarters, um, uh, after the first woman engineer at NASA. So that was a pretty big first for women this, this week. Um, what do you do in cybersecurity? So what do I do in cybersecurity? So my job is to take all the data that NetScout has and protect it. So if I was a bank, I would be, you know, protecting your money, but we're a technology company. So you know, what we need to protect is the data that we have about our customers or data that we have from our customers network. And so I protect that. So, you know, from a security perspective, I, I told you how I sort of grew up in IT. Well, there are different security tools we use like firewalls, um, you know, it's your house. If you're at your house right now, in order to be out in the internet, there's a, a, a router that connects you to the internet. So um, I make sure that the routers and the firewalls that connect you to the internet for NetScout are secure in that we keep the bad people out and we allow the good people and the employees to get in and get what they need. I thought your story was really, really inspiring. I especially love how you said that went too quick. Okay. 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 Excellent. Thank you so much, Deb. That was very insightful. I'm pretty sure we have about 105 students, girls today, and hopefully all 105 will get into technology with your speech. Yeah, I mean, it. you know, like Latha, it doesn't have to be computers. I mean, you know, there's engineering. There are so many jobs in technology. Um, and like I said, you know, uh, you know, take chances, try as many as you want when, you know, if you get an opportunity to to take a class in high school that you're like, well, I don't know if I'll like this, try it. You may find that you love it and that's what you wanna do for the rest of your life. Okay. Thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you so Thanks. much. I mean, it was very inspiring for me. I feel inspired, so I think the kids would be. <laughs> even, though, even though you're not a girl, even though you're not a girl, yeah. you feel inspired. <laughs> Did I have too much energy? Did I have too much energy? I'm a morning person, can't you tell? <laughs> well, it's still eight o'clock for us, so I think it's early morning for us. So let me go ahead and introduce our next speaker, which is Ali Huang. So Ali, let me go ahead and make you the presenter. All right, sounds good. I want to introduce Ali um, Shailesh. You had a slide on it. <laughs> yes, I will do that. Did you? Sorry about that. Yeah. Can I also get permissions to share slides? Yes. Yes. As I make you the presenter, you would have the. Okay. You want to just, yeah, Shailesh would do one slide and then she, he would hand it over to you, Ali. Yeah. Sounds good. Want me to share? Um, I got it. Let me know when you're able to see my screen. Yeah, you're seeing it. Yep. Yeah. Well, our next speaker is the very talented Ali Huang. Ali is a biomedical engineer. She did her PhD from MIT. And uh, 
uh, she did her uh, she is a biomedical entrepreneur uh, she is a co-founder of her, a company called biobits uh, so i would give the floor to ali please go ahead and yeah. inspire us with your story ali <laughs> All right, yeah, awesome. Especially again, you know, as, as uh, Shailesh and Debbie said, we are very inspired, Ali, you are the millennial. So we really want to hear from your perspective. <laughs> How is it out there in the world in technology and biology? Yeah. And, you know, go ahead. Thank you. All right, for sure. Um, okay, so looks, I'm just waiting to be able to share my slides and then I can start. Oh, thank you. All right, can everyone see that? Yes. All right, I can't see, uh, WebEx doesn't show me what I'm sharing. So hopefully you guys can see slides. Um, but hi, yeah, thank you so much to the organizers for having me and giving me the opportunity to talk to you all today. Uh, and I specifically wanted to talk about biotechnology and how you girls can actually come up with really innovative ideas at the intersection of biology and technology. Um, but first, a little bit about me and I, introduction already covered some of this. Um, but I was born and raised in Minnesota, where there's a lot of snow, as you can see there. <laughs> and ever since I was young, I loved taking things apart, uh, usually my toys and putting them back together again to see how they would work. Um, and when I was first learned about biology in high school, I realized that life and biology were just made up of lots of molecular sized machines so naturally i wanted to take these machines apart to see how they work too so i decided to go to college for biomedical engineering at johns hopkins university and that's where i learned that you know biomedical engineering and biotech isn't just about taking things apart and putting them back together again it's about putting them back together in a new way. So you actually have a new solution that might solve a problem, usually in health or medicine. Wanted to learn even more. So I went back to grad school at MIT. There's a picture of me and my first year roommate with uh, the mascot of MIT, Tim the Beaver. And I got my PhD in biological engineering. And specifically, I was studying a type of biology called synthetic biology basically how to build new biological machines that can do all sorts of things and solve all sorts of problems things that you may have heard about in the news like uh, gene editing and my focus in my thesis was actually about using these tools for education being able to bring fun hands-on activities to students like you so that uh, you can learn about biology too. And as part of my thesis, I co-founded BioBits, which is basically a biology kit. It's kind of like the biology version of a chemistry set to let students play with molecular biology in a more affordable way. So more students can access it, right? Not just students or schools that have a lot of money. And now uh, I work at Mini PCR Bio, which is a company that makes hands-on activities for students like you. And I have brought BioBits uh, to Mini PCR Bio, and I'm working for them to develop uh, BioBits a little further. Uh, and just to prove that you know I'm more than just a scientist working away on my lab bench uh, outside of sciencing, uh, I really enjoy baking, cooking, reading, uh, superheroes, dogs, and traveling. Um, really quick before I go on, uh, could the panelists all mute? I'm hearing a lot of feedback in my ear, unfortunately, when I'm presenting. Um, thank you. And so Debbie did a really great job inspiring you and giving you the motivation about, you know, being girls in STEM, which is so important. So on my end, I wanted to get you girls actually thinking about ideas. So I was going to share the story behind Mini PCR Bio and how the company started. Um, it's a great example of how biology and technology was combined to come up with a solution to an existing problem and hopefully inspire you during this hackathon. So I'm not going to be talking about uh, bio bits in my own story, but I figured the mini PCR, the way that was invented might be more fitting for your hackathon. So when we're talking about biotechnology, you have to talk about DNA. 
And most of us know what DNA is and that we each have a unique DNA sequence that makes up who we are. Uh, but how does DNA do this exactly? Uh, DNA is actually the blueprint for life. Um, it's the instructions that you need for us and other living things to survive. And being able to analyze and understand what the instructions of DNA mean has transformed so many aspects of society. Uh, things like forensics, for example. I'm sure you've seen on TV how DNA can be used to identify suspects. Um, for food and agriculture, changing the DNA slightly in some plants and crops have actually allowed us to grow more food more easily so we can feed more people. And currently, probably most relevant, in the world of molecular diagnostics, uh, DNA technology is making it possible for us to test people for certain diseases, like currently for things like COVID-19. So today I wanted to talk specifically about one challenge that the founders of Mini PCR Bio encountered about DNA technology and how they used technology to solve this problem and actually started a whole company from it. And before I get into that, um, so there's this commonly used technique in analyzing DNA called polymerase chain reaction or PCR for short. And you might have actually heard about PCR a lot lately because people are using this type of technique to test for COVID-19. So if you heard about PCR in the news, this is what it is. And I'm just going to explain very briefly uh, what it is. So let's say that you have a patient and you want to know if they have the coronavirus or not. So you take a sample from them, usually from their nose, and you're going to end up with a really complex sample. It's going to have the patient's DNA in there. It's going to have the DNA of the bacteria and other microorganisms that are found in your nose. But and if they have the coronavirus, it's also going to have the coronavirus DNA in there. And so trying to find out whether or not this patient sample contains the coronavirus is kind of like finding a needle in a haystack. And so that's where uh, PCR polymerase chain reaction comes in. And using PCR, we're actually able to find a region of interest, an exact DNA sequence that matches the virus DNA and then make lots of copies of it. So we're actually able to detect it. So it's like you're taking your needle in the haystack and duplicating that needle over and over again until your entire haystack is basically needles. And so you can tell whether or not this exists. And you know, if we're able to detect it, then we know the patient has coronavirus. And just as a aside, don't worry, amplifying the virus DNA does not amplify the virus itself. We're just amplifying a small part of the virus DNA and it's all it's used for is detection. It's essentially junk. It can't do anything. It can't transmit or infect anyone. So we're just basically using this as a marker to be able to tell whether or not a patient has the coronavirus. And PCR is super important. It's not just used in diagnostics. It's used by scientists to be able to amplify DNA so they're able to analyze it. It's such a core technique in biotechnology. In fact, biotechnology as we know it, all that stuff I showed you on the previous slide here, all this would not exist without uh, PCR. But the challenge with PCR is that the machines that you use to run them, called thermocyclers, are really expensive. They're really bulky and heavy, and they're really, really complicated to use. So this is something that only a trained scientist in a research lab can actually use. So that was the challenge that the founders of Mini PCR Bio decided to tackle. How do we take this machine? which you know, performs a really important process for DNA technology and make it smaller, cheaper, easier to use. Because if we can do that, then we can take PCR and DNA technology to solve even more problems in even more places, not just in the research lab. And actually, when you break down the PCR thermocycler, it's actually pretty basic. There's only a couple of elements. It just needs to be able to heat up, cool down. It needs to have some sort of circuit that could control the cycles between heating and cooling. And then there has to be a way for the user to be able to control this, some sort of program. And so, you know, they said, okay, it's just these really basic four elements. Let's build a simpler version of the thermocycler. And so they combined a couple of elements together. So for heating, they just had a heating lid and a heating block. For cooling, they just had a couple of fans that could really cool the system quickly. And as for cycling between the two, 
circuit board, they had a little microprocessor they can put in. And when you combine all this together, ta-da, you have a miniature PCR thermocycler, hence why the company is called Mini PCR. And actually, I don't know if my video is still visible. Uh, I actually have my Mini PCR with me right now. Um, as many of us are, we've been working from home. Um, but I've still been able to run ex my experiments for work just in my bedroom because you can see this thing is very small. It's very portable and it's really easy to use. And just one more thing. I also mentioned that there needs to be a way for the user to program the mini PCR. So we actually also, they also developed a easy to use app that you could just run on your smartphone or your computer to be able to program the PCR conditions directly. And this is really important because you want a really easy to use interface. If you girls are thinking about developing an app for today's hackathon, you want something that it's very intuitive and obvious to a user. So right, so like this app, for example, we made it so that even non-scientists can use it too. We've made it so easy, in fact, that students like you actually use this and the mini PCR in their classrooms to they actually get to analyze their own DNA and learn more about DNA and biology. And it's also actually used by scientists outside of the lab as well. Uh, we had one grad student from Yale actually take one of these to Madagascar so she could run around in the jungles with one of these and study lemurs, which is pretty awesome. Um, we had one virologist, Ian Goodfellow, who took a bunch of mini PCRs to Sierra Leone in the midst of the Ebola outbreak a couple years ago, so he could actually track the outbreak of the virus. And the mini PCR made it possible to do this PCR analysis anywhere. You're not just limited to your lab, you can take it with you wherever you go. And right now, there are a lot of scientists right now using these machines to try to figure out ways to make COVID-19 testing more widespread and easy. So there are a lot of scientists prototyping new methods using this. Um, and in fact, astronauts on the International Space Station even used a mini PCR to run biology experiments in space, which is pretty awesome. As you can see from this picture, I promise it's not Photoshop. This is an actual photo of our mini PCR floating around on the International Space Station. And because you can't bring anything too heavy or big into space, this was perfect for them. And in fact, we actually have, and if you, know, if you like doing things like today's hackathon, uh, we actually host a free science competition every year called Genes in Space, where students like you actually propose biology experiments that astronauts could use the mini PCR with to run on the International Space Station. And the winning prize of this competition is we actually fly your experiment into space and you get to actually go to Cape Carnaval and watch the space shuttle launch with your experiment on it. So if you know this, if you're interested in biology, but you also love space, check this out. It's a really fun free competition. It's over for this year now, uh, but it will open up again next year. So have that on your radar. Um, if you like doing hackathons like this, you'll love to be able to, to do that. And so, yeah, I just wanted to part with and end with some advice for today. Um, first of all, this idea of combining different fields or different types of science, the best solutions are often a combination of a lot of different things. It's the solutions isn't just a biology solution. It's not always just a programming solution, not always just a chemistry solution, for example. It's often a lot of people with different expertise coming together and pulling their ideas together to come up with the best solution. Um, I also challenge you to challenge existing solutions just because there is something out there that does a thing already, like there was already a thermocycler out there that did PCR. There's always room for improvement, right? We were able to make a smaller, more portable version of it. And so challenge existing solutions because they can always be improved upon. Um, think outside of the box. Don't limit yourself to just one area. Look at the problem from another angle. And most importantly, definitely most importantly, had fun because problem solving with science and technology is so enjoyable. It's so much fun. So don't forget to enjoy yourself. Don't take yourself too seriously. This hackathon is a great opportunity for you guys to explore ideas, share ideas, and come up with really, really innovative solutions. So yeah, that's all I had. Uh, thank you so much again for having me. I've put my email on this slide. Um, if you are curious about, you know, you know, 
me, what I studied in college, what I studied in grad school, what is it like working as a scientist in biology, you can always feel free to contact me through email. I'm always happy to mentor students because uh, when I was your age, I didn't have someone that I could talk to and I just had to kind of figure things out on my own. So now that I'm kind of further along in my career, I want to be able to give back. And so if you need some mentorship or you just want to talk about science, just send me an email. That's wonderful, Ali. That that was an amazing speech. Um, I wish you were in this generation with you. I mean, I, I wish I was a student, you know. <laughs> I'm just thinking I, I should be participating. Yeah, in for sure. We didn't have any of the stuff when I, even when I was a student in high school, like maybe for biology, we got to like go look at leaves and stuff. But like now students are able to <laughs> actually analyze their own DNA and see what genes they have, which is insane. So you guys are really, really lucky that, you know, you're at this, Really, we're we're really at like this like cutting edge. We're at this like really exciting time in biotechnology where we're developing so many tools and we're making it more accessible to everyone. And yeah, it's just like super super exciting. And, and now um, it becomes a purpose. It becomes a purpose, right? We are in this COVID situation. Hey, hey, yeah. girls, youngers, we are looking to you to solve this this huge pandemic, huge global issue. We're all looking to you. So we are super excited mm -hmm. to see your uh, solutions today. Um, I see a question or two. Should I go ahead and answer them? Yes, yes, please. Yes, okay, so someone asked me, how did I get into MIT? Um, yeah, so I went to MIT for graduate school, which is kind of an optional school you can go to after a regular college or regular university. And the way I got to MIT, um, so I actually took time off between uh, between my undergrad college education and going to grad school, I actually worked in biotechnology for two years out in California. I actually worked at a company called Genentech for two years. Um, and the way I got into MIT, people think, oh, you need like great grades and good test scores. Um, and, you know, that is partially true. But what MIT and a lot of these other colleges are looking for is they want to see that you're a real person. They want to see that you're more than just, you know, a high GPA and high test scores. They want to see there's a real person behind those numbers who's passionate about something. And they honestly don't care what you're passionate about. It doesn't even have to be science. They just want to see you have a passion for something because that passion and drive will translate into success in college. And so they're just looking, uh, even if let's say you're like barely passionate about volunteering at the local soup kitchen, that's all you do, that would help you so much more than say like a high test score or high grade. They're just looking for really well, and again, this is true of all colleges, not just MIT. They're just looking for people who are, you know, real human beings and just want to, they have the passion, the drive to help save the world. So you showing up at this hackathon indicates that you have a passion and drive for something. So you guys already have a really great head start if you're already doing things like this at your age. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Uh, were there any more questions to you, Ali, in your chat? We don't uh, I don't see anything directly to me. I don't know if you're seeing okay. anything else. But again, I put my email in the slides. So here, let me just pop my email in the chat as well so people can copy and paste it. Uh, I think that goes to everyone. Um, okay, we, we can, actually have one more. We can send your, your desk to everybody. I just got one more question. Can I answer it real quick? Yes, please. Yeah. So some, someone asked, do you have any tips for kids who don't know how to code but still want to create solutions? Um, full disclosure, I don't know how to code at all. <laughs> um, I don't know how to program. Like I can, I know maybe a little bit of HTML, but that's it. And the great thing is that technology isn't just about coding. It isn't just about computer programming. I specialize in biotechnology, which is, so I basically code with DNA uh, is the way I describe it. And so if you're interested in STEM, if you're interested in programming, I mean, if you're able to learn how to program and code, I still think it's really, really valuable. That's kind of one thing that I regret is that I didn't kind of brush up on my computer programming skills. Um, but so if you're able to kind of do things like girls who code and learn how to uh, pr computer program, it's good, but it's not, you know, it, you don't have to have those skills to be able to get into other aspects of engineering. 
um, because biotechnology is really all about uh, running experiments. It's all about the biological side. And the great thing, like I said, like, you know, a lot of solutions aren't just a pure biology solution. They're not just a pure computer programming solution. You often have many people coming together. So, for example, if I wanted to come up with an app that's biotechnology related, I would team up with someone else who does have the programming skills, right? It's all about teamwork, not just one person's going to be able to do it alone. I would bring my expertise in biology to the table, while they would bring the expertise in computer programming to the table. I'm actually doing that right now um, with someone. And so even though I don't know how to code at all, you know, teamwork, you know, you're able to kind of uh, still everyone just contributes their expertise. So learn to code if you can, uh, but it's not 100% essential if it's not something you're interested in. Um, someone asked, I like biology and I like chemistry, uh, but I can't decide which one I like more. Is there a way to do both? Uh, funny enough, there is a whole field out there called biochemistry, where you combine both biology and chemistry together. The great thing about STEM and science these days is that it's it's no longer just biology, just chemistry, just physics. It's often a combination. There's basically a combination of whatever field you want to make. Uh, there's biophysics, there's biochemistry, um, and biotechnology is actually a really loosely defined field. It's just basically biology plus whatever other technologies out there. So you can combine biology and programming, you can combine biology and chemistry, and you know if you're trying to decide like you know which one you like more i think like debbie mentioned try new things um the advice i always give students is that you know go and try something and even if you find out you don't like it that wasn't a waste of time right because you found out you don't like it and now you're not going to spend the rest of your life doing it uh, the story i tell is like when i was at in college at johns hopkins i thought i wanted to be a doctor a medical doctor um, and I was like a pre-med, I was going to take the MCATs and everything. And then I volunteered at a doctor's office for a summer and found out I hated it. And, you know, if I didn't do that, I would have gone to med school, then been stuck being a doctor, which I would not have enjoyed. So, you know, it's really important to try things just because something sounds cool in paper or in the classroom, it may not translate to what you like in real life. So getting out there, you know, internships, learning what it's really like to do the job, and so you know, you know, if you're going to want to do it for the rest of your life. Well, thank you, Ali. That was super inspiring. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you again so much for having me. It, this is I always love doing things like this because it makes me so excited to see that like, over a hundred girls are working on a Saturday morning to do a hackathon. That's so amazing. You guys, you guys, all you girls out there are so inspiring. And and Debbie yeah. and Ali, if you wait for a few more minutes, we will be taking a group picture where everybody's going to come on. Come yeah, on. I actually just got, so another, I just got another question coming in, actually. <laughs> they don't want to let you go, huh? <laughs> yeah, um, so the they asked how you decided to go into biomedical engineering. Um, so, like, when I was high, in high school, I really loved biology. But like I said, I also loved engineering, taking things apart, putting them back together again. And like I said, I also kind of thought that I wanted to be a doctor. And so biomedical engineering was actually kind of the perfect thing to study. And even though I found I didn't want to be a doctor, I found out I love doing research. I love like designing experiments and seeing if they work or fail. And so biomedical engineering was kind of the perfect way for me to combine all my interests. And just another general advice is just to talk to people in these different fields, like you'll find out there's so there's so much more out there in biology than just being a doctor or being a scientist, right? Um, there are professions where people, if you're interested in politics, for example, you can work for a kind of government agency that specializes in science. So you can combine policy and science together. You know, if you love education, like I've pivoted into education now, right? I'm working with teachers and students, um, science education is so important. Science communication, for example, is a huge important field right now that people don't realize exists. Uh, it's really important for us to be able to communicate science to non-scientists, especially like, you know, we can see examples right now, the COVID-19 pandemic, be able to communicate to the general public why it's important to wear a mask or how the virus works. And, you know, you need to be able to communicate these ideas clearly. And honestly, not all scientists are great at doing that. So like science communication, is its own field as well. So the more you talk to people, the more you find out there's all these different jobs out there. So just reach out, talk to people, find out about their careers. Like Debbie said, raise your hand. <laughs>
Yeah. Uh, if I'm not good at math, can I still go into a STEM field? Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm terrible at math. Uh, uh, I, I kind of joke like I took calculus and all that in college and I don't use any of it. Like I use I maybe algebra from time to time in designing experiments. Um, it really depends on what you go into. Like if you are going to go into math, for example, OK, you probably will need to have some math skills, um, but don't let lack of math hold you back from going into the STEM fields. Because like I said, STEM is just so much more than just what you typically see on TV shows, right? Like I said, there's science communication for people who are more outgoing. Um, if you're artistic, for example, there's a huge market out there for people who understand biology and can draw diagrams, right? Like it's really hard working with an artist and you're trying to tell them, hey, can you draw DNA? They don't know what DNA is and they draw it wrong. So if you are artistic but have a great biology background, there's a lot of money actually and be able to draw diagrams for textbooks and slideshows and stuff. Like people will pay good money for good diagrams. That's another example of, you know, a STEM field that's not just purely math. Um, so if you're not good at math, don't let that hold you back. Again, talk to people. There's so many more fields out there. Uh, someone asked, what is it like to design experiments? Uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, I will warn you, 90% uh, of your experiments that you design will fail, uh, or not fail, but won't, won't work. But that doesn't necessarily mean it failed. It means that now you know that that's not what to do, and you're going to use those results and design a new experiment. So, you know, some days, you know, especially during my PhD, I felt like, oh, what am I doing? All these experiments aren't working. But then you get that one experiment that does work and, you know, you've come up with something new and it's so, so rewarding. And for me, the design experiments, it's a lot of fun. It's like playing a game. It's like, okay, I have these variables. And it's like solving a puzzle, right? Like I have these variables, I have these conditions. How do I make them fit to design an experiment that's going to teach me more? Um, it's kind of like solving the mystery of life, essentially, in biology. Um, would you recommend getting into bio research in high school? Uh, yeah, if you have the opportunity to do biology research or any type of research in high school, go for it. If you're, it's a little more rare and uncommon um, because they do limit, there's an age limit for when you can work in a lab usually at most places. But if you're able to get your hands on, like, say, like one of these like micro pipettes, so this is the tool of a biologist. Uh, you do your experiments with this. It's basically like a fancy straw to suck up like little like amounts of liquids back and forth. Um, if you're able to come to college and you're looking for like a lab to join to do research and you tell the professor, hey, I've done research in high school and I can pipette and I can do all these different techniques, they'll hire you on the spot. Uh, I didn't come in with that with that and it was really, really hard for me to actually find a position in a lab because I was competing with all these other kids who had had bio research experience in high school and not to discourage you like if you can't get bio research and experience in high school, that's not the end of the world world, I was still able to like talk to professors and convince them to hire me that they could teach me. But having that experience does give you a leg up. Definitely. Um, what happens to the experiment when you do it? Does it get marketed? Um, so specifically in and this different for what you do in my job, I the experiments I'm doing is I'm trying to do experiments to find out what fun activities will work for you guys in the classroom. So I have to make sure it works in my hands first before I, you know, we market and sell it. But it's not it's not all just about marketing and selling. Like if you work at a college university or, and basic research, you're just trying to find out more things and you're just trying to publish papers and tell the world new things about biology that we didn't know before. There's not necessarily like a commercial or marketing element to it. You're just trying to tell the world and discover new things. If you work at a company, however, then yes, your experiments may be used down the line to develop a new product for the company. And again, it's all about what you want to do. Are you interested in like basic research and learning more about how life in this universe works? Or if you know you want like a very targeted problem to solve. And again, uh, doing internships, Working on experiences and labs will help you figure out like what works best for you. Uh, thank you, thank you, Ali. Yeah, sorry, more and more questions keep coming. Uh, so feel free to cut me off whenever. Um, yeah, probably we can take those questions offline and we can email them to you. Or you know, okay, yeah. Them. Is there any one last one you would need to on? You would like to answer? You can just combine them and just answer one last question, Ali. Uh, one last question. Um, how hard is it to get a job in the field of bio and 
bioengineers. Some people say it's easy. Some people it's really hard. Um, honestly, it just depends on the job market. It's that's, you know, some years it's easier. Some years it isn't my experience. Um, I got really, really lucky and, um, I was able to get a uh, job at Genentech straight out of college. And that was just me interviewing. Um, and so. You know, it's really, I, it's hard for me to tell you whether or not it's going to be easy when you, once you guys graduate. Um, but, you know, just talk to people. The more people you talk to, it's not just you learn from more from them. They could, those could be people you talk to later to be like, hey, do you know any of any job openings or whatnot? Like networking is super important. So the more people you talk to, the bigger your network you're built up, and then you can rely on that network and look for jobs in the future. Um, and yeah, sorry, I don't want to take too much time away from me hackathon. So if you have any more questions, I put my email in the chat. Uh, I'm sure you guys can also send out my email to everyone. If you have questions that you want to ask, just email me. I am happy to jump on a video chat or talk to you over the phone or email if you're interested in learning more about, I guess, my life and my career. <laughs> you. Thanks, Ali. That was super informative. I mean, I I hope uh, Kit enjoyed it as well, and as you can see from the questions, and I believe they are excited and they learned a lot. So, it, I mean, thank you, thank you very much. I know, and I love talking about myself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Shailesh, uh, before the keynote speakers leave, I think it'll be very good if we can do the group photo now. Uh, the group, uh, if you can please, you know, make everybody uh, all the, so all the all the students, if you can please come on video. And uh, you know that'll be really nice. We would like to take a group picture with with the uh, panelists and with the key, keynote speakers. Shailesh, is it possible to make them? Yes, I am just making them panelists. So if they are coming on the videos, so all of you, can you please can you please come on video? All the girls, you know, you heard such a great keynote speaking from Debbie Briggs and Ali, and they're all willing to inspire you more. So if you can, all of you, please come on video, just 30 seconds, and then you can go back to your shell. Yeah, there you go. Okay, all, all of you, please smile. <laughs> okay, one more, give me one second. I'm just going to the next, next slot. There you go, all of you, bright and early on a Saturday morning, at least for California. It's like 7 a.m., 8 a.m., as people said, you know, and you all look dressed up. Oh, my God. <laughs> so that was the thing that we asked you to come on video. Okay, one more, please. I see. I see. Sorry, my, my, uh, my WebEx crashed. I'm back. <laughs> I see some guys up there. So that's nice. You're, you're supporting all of us. Thank you. Okay, I think we are good. Um, Shailesh, uh, you can take back control. Uh, but again, you know, Ali and Debbie Briggs, thank you so much. This was just wonderful. I'm pretty sure, you know, these it will take these kids a long way. Thank, thanks to both of you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Shailesh. Have fun today. Yes, let me know if you're able to see my screen. Yes. Yes. So the topic of the day is uh, innovative solutions to pandemics. So like uh, Debbie and Ali said, use your innovative solutions, bring out your own ideas, see how you can solve the problem, how you utilize this particular day and the days before to come up with a solution which you can present to the judges today. You can have any idea, you can use any kind of resources, at the end of the day, by 4.30, make a presentation, give it to judges, uh, have one of the teammates present it before the judges. Uh, there is no restriction on what kind of language, like Java or JavaScript, HTML or app, which you want to do. You can create a website, you can create an app, you can come up with any idea which you think solves the uh, pandemic solutions which we are living in, the new normal which has become right now. Uh, we are working from home, we are staying indoors. So use your ideas to solve any kind of issues which you think we are facing today because of this pandemic. Any way you think your solution, your application can go ahead and solve the problem, the pandemic. Uh, be concise, use, you will be given three to four minutes slot to present to the judges. So make sure you have a demo or a presentation 
prepared in such a way that it is tailored, cut short to just three, four minutes of presentation. And I would just say, I mean, be innovative. I mean, you heard from some great speakers out there to use your ideas in any way possible. Like Ali said, use any of the methods to come up with solutions. So here's the topic for the day. Let me go ahead and uh, talk more about the judging criteria. So the judging criteria are ideation, innovation, technical functionality and design, presentation, branding material and feasibility, and the X factor. So talking about the ideation is ideation is how far uh, you know the scores are based on how far your idea is from the main topic of uh, which was provided to you. Innovation is how fresh your idea is, how innovatively you are able to think, or is it out of the box, or are you using some regular ideas? So you'll be judged on that. Technical functionality and design is how functional or working your app, your code is, or your website is. How how, how much are you able to create it in this particular span of, of five or six hours till you finish the presentation? And the next factor is uh, the presentation branding and market feasibility. How you present it, how uh, you brand your own product, your app, your solution. And uh, can it be really applied to the market in the present scenario? This is some of the factors which you'll be judged on. And the last factor is the X factor. The X factor is something like uh, which makes the judges go, wow, I mean, that's a great idea. We can just go ahead and use it or you know, something which has really potential to become the next big thing. So that's the X factor. So these are uh, a few of the criteria uh, which you will be judged on today. Let me go ahead next with the, the code of conduct. So before we leave uh, towards the Discord, uh, just a reminder, be courteous to the fellow team members, be courteous to um, the mentors, organizers who are there on the discord over here as well make sure you use uh, polite language and uh, the rules are uh, you would begin up to four minutes per presentation when you're doing the judging round uh, when you log in to the rooms which would be provided on the dashboard uh, you can know that uh, uh, you would be given a brief before uh, the judging starts on how to uh, give the presentation and go forward from there. Uh, you should, it will be really helpful if you have a pre-decided speaker amongst your team. If you are a team of three or four people, let one person take the lead and do the talking because if everyone wants to talk, you will not have enough time. That's, that's just a suggestion, but you can take your own route. And... Uh, uh, I would like to share more about the dashboards. So this is the dashboard which you can go ahead and see. So this is where most of the information would be. Uh, all the links are provided over here. You have your team information here. Next, we would be discussing more on the teams. And uh, if you're able to see your teams, if you have any problems, you can go ahead that. So I would like to uh, give the stage to Maniam to so, uh, Shailesh, it would help if you go through this dashboard, please. The dashboard sections, what all is in there, just quickly. Uh, let me go ahead and share with the dashboard itself so that. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Right. Are you able to see the dashboard screen? Yes. Yes. So, uh, if you look here, uh, you had the registration link here, which you could use uh, when you came in at seven o'clock. Uh, the master webex link is already here um, in case you forget this is there the templates uh, these are uh, kind of uh, these are just the templates which you can use for the presentation uh, you can use your own uh, template but this is just a recommendation from us 430 is your final project submission where uh, if you go here you will be able to see the various folders which already are created uh, on the team name you have a folder created for each of the team you can go inside the folder and deposit your 
pose, your presentation, which can be viewed by the judges. You can just drop your all the files over here. When you're doing the presentation, you can share your screen and uh, uh, show the judges of your uh, give them a working demo. Judging room links one and two uh, will be updated uh, by noon today, so you would have these details over here. So if you look here, uh, we would assign you to a room where you will have a, a panel of three or four judges who will be judging you. So the links to those particular WebEx would be updated over here. And these are your team information. Uh, if you still have any doubts in the uh, team information, we can go ahead and make sure that uh, uh, you, know, you have the team information in place. Okay, thank you, Shalish. So with this, I'll, I'll hand over the stage to Maniam so he can go over the team information. Okay. Um, Maniam, can you please do a quick introduction of yourself, please? What do you do at NetScout? Yes, hi. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, excited to be here with all of you guys. Uh, and uh, you guys made our job easy. Uh, I saw some girls waking up at 4.50, 4.30 a.m. and checking in. Um, so thank you for doing that. Um, I will. Uh, uh, can you make me presenter? Uh, yes, you are uh, the presenter. Right. Okay, let me just uh, show you a couple of things again in 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 the spirit of talking about different technologies. So you kind of see who is all here. So um, so this is another application. Obviously, where you're not going to be using this, but uh, Salesforce is a huge business application used by you know thousands of companies around the world. We actually use Salesforce to actually develop, you know, so this is, this is an example of an app. Uh, and what you can see here is that we had 127 kids totally register in our Star Hacks page. Um, and you can see in this report that um, obviously 20 of them had other, you know, issues or personal emergencies or whatever that they could not make it. So in total, 107 of you confirmed and signed up the waiver forms. I was the one chasing your parents to, to get the viewers signed. And again, for that, we used another technology called Adobe Sign. So everything was done electronically. So already you've seen how many different technologies we're using from WebEx to Discord, Salesforce, Adobe eSign, so much technology, everything runs on code. So uh, this is an example of all the things you learned today uh, in terms of the, you know, the things you can do with, with computer science. Going back here, um, so out of the 127, obviously 107 confirmed, we were expecting 107. Uh, this morning, uh, we have 92 so far. Um, if you can see, this is the registration page that you filled. Uh, we're going to be a closed registration. We're not going to be allowing any more new attendees um, to join. So of the 92 people, um, you know, uh, the only only adjustment we had to make was teams with less than three people. Um, so there was a team number 22 before, uh, Violet Fox and Elizabeth Fox. We have moved you guys to a three member team, which is team number 11. So Elizabeth and Violet, if you're listening, you are part of team 11 now, number uh, team 11, okay? That's the only big change we made. Now, since the team 22 is now blank, just to make it sequential, the team 23 group, which has already checked in all the people that were part of the team 23, we just renamed you as team 22. So um, we will make sure that on the Discord channel, you get invited to the team number 22 room. That's the only change. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll get Tevin um, to kind of do that. Lata, if you can just uh, message Tevin. So sure. Make 23 uh, people from 23 Discord room move to 22. So they all remain intact. Uh, Any questions? Go ahead, Al. So, so with that, uh, let me also show you uh, just a view of the teams. Uh, this is 92 registered, and you can see most of the teams have either five, four, there's perhaps one team that has uh, three members, but that's fine. Um, you should be able to co collaborate. So three to five is the size, mostly five or four. Um, and you can see that. So the only change, as I mentioned, is Team 22, the original people, Violet Fox and Elizabeth Fox, are now part of Team 11. 
And uh, the Team 23, which was named as Team 23, is now changed to Team 22. Okay. Um, and one of the participants, the, the last name uh, was, um, let me show you here. So there was one person who was re registered as Ridvi Mani Rajan, and, and they uh, logged in as Ridvi Kannan, but I think it's the same person. Uh, so if you prefer to go by this, because the certificates will be based on the name you provide. So if, if you can just type in, in the Q&A box, we'll change your name from this to that. And that's pretty much all the changes we've done. So pretty much uh, all the teams in, are intact from the last communication uh, with a couple of changes where we moved uh, we moved uh, Elizabeth Fox and Violet Fox to team number 11. Okay, is that clear to everyone? And Dinesh, if you want to just show the report, I'm, I'm going to stop sharing here for a second. Uh, if you can make Dinesh the presenter, he can actually show the report and we can just scroll through it just so you can see who are all part of your team sequentially. Okay. Yes. Dinesh, now you are the presenter. And Dinesh here actually created the Salesforce application. He's from the IT department. Yes, Dinesh. Yeah. Very well. Good morning. Uh, so this is the team assignment report uh, that uh, we are uh, maintaining in uh, Salesforce. Uh, so here uh, you can see the first two columns are the team number and the team name. Um, and uh, you can see uh, the team members. Uh, should we go through this list in sequence so yeah, they can just go oh, just you know, just crawl slowly crawl, you know so that so the first four teams can see and then uh then we'll move to the next so four teams at a time you know um uh, and make this a little uh bigger so they can see it uh properly and if anyone has any questions they can they can type their uh, their question in the chat window yeah you can just crawl slowly yeah people so can. the team one and uh, team two uh, if you can please uh, verify if if all uh, your team members are uh, correctly represented here yeah we can move on like yeah just quickly yeah. team three and four yeah team five six yep seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and uh, 22. So we have a total of 22 teams. Um, we will split uh, the teams into uh, two groups. So we will announce uh, your groups a little later once we finalize which group uh, each team um, is going into. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dinesh. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? I don't see the questions. Uh, Shailesh, is there any questions based on what we've shared? No, we don't see it. Uh, so the only thing I'm going to work on here in a couple of minutes here is make sure that the people who got moved to Team 11, um, you will be given an invite or automatically moved to the Discord channel for that. And then the people who are currently listed as Team 23 um, you will be moved to room number 22, or maybe we'll rename, uh, just hang in there. We'll back to you on that. Yeah. Thanks, Mariam and Dinesh, for the team information. Uh, if you have any questions, please go ahead and use the chat and the QA function of this event and let us know so that we can go ahead and answer your questions. If, uh, I hope everyone now knows which team they belong to and they have already formed the teams and are working together in Discord. Yeah. You want to share your screen, Shailesh? Yes, I'll go ahead and share my screen now. So what are the next steps, Shailesh? So in another five minutes, we will all move to Discord. So you have some more, few more announcements, and then we will move, we will all move to Discord, the coding platform, correct? Right. That is correct. Okay. Can we share the screen? Yeah, share the screen. The five more minutes of announcement team. I know there are some questions about when you will you're all excited to start coding, but uh, just another five more minutes. We just have the last few announcements and then we will all move on to the coding platform.
If you have any questions on Discord, go ahead and look at the uh, Discord demo, which is already present at the YouTube channel. The link is provided over here. Uh, uh, you can always uh, ask us in the Q&A section. Uh, we'll be waiting here for some time uh, to answer your questions. If not, uh, if once you log into the Discord, please go ahead and make use of the uh, chat functionality of Discord to ask questions to the mentors who are there waiting for you. Do a, are we doing a demo, uh, Shalish, or the, the No, I don't think so. I think most of them are in. Yeah, I think most of them are in Discord. Uh, we, we'll just provide the YouTube link so that they can go ahead and uh, take the uh, demo at the uh, link provided. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, Lata, do you have something to say? Share among you. I think all the best. We are very excited. There's a whole, we have about 25 mentors waiting, waiting to, you know, help you guys throughout your process. We have about 10 international judges, uh, you know, uh, waiting to judge your thing. So, you know, uh, all the best. And we'll all move to Discord now. Um, all the announcements from now on will be made in Discord. I think about, uh, as Shailesh said, about 11.45 or so, uh, you know, we will have some puzzles, some games. So look out for further announcements in the Discord announcement channel. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining uh, the Vegas meeting over here. Uh, and if you have any questions on Discord, uh, you know, feel free to ask the questions when you go into Discord. We have mentors there. If there's any confusion with a couple of the moves we made, we we'll adjust that, but just ask those questions. Um, My name, do you want to share the uh, Discord screen so that they can have a look at it? Yes, I can. Yeah, I can make you the presenter. And teams that don't have a question on this, uh, feel free to move on to the coding platform. I'm still not able to share, share my screen. Can you make me presenter, uh, Ellie? Yes, uh, you are now the presenter. Okay. So once you go in, hopefully, you know, you see that the hedge, which was a hackathon, we changed that to, uh, it shows as Star Hacks main, okay? Star Hacks main, and uh, that's where all the channels are. General announcements will be made here on the announcements channel. Uh, some few resources and as we go along if other mentors or uh, you know volunteers have any resources as part of the q a they're going to post the resources here so check it out uh, before you start so just kind of familiarize with what is available there so some good information here uh, just for your reference some rules and guidelines i think some of it you've already seen you know in terms of how you need to interact with others and with the mentors um, if you need help um, you need to come here and, and as you can see, the people who are listed as mentors, they have a mentor in front. I mean, the, the organizers like myself, Shailesh, you know, they're, they're listed as staff. Uh, so there's a, a number of mentors. Uh, and then you can see the, the participants below. Uh, you can chat amongst yourself, but um, the, the, uh, this is just a welcome channel for all those people who join. It's just an automatic channel. So nothing, nothing fancy here. Um, we do have one channel that, that will not be visible to you. This is more for our mentors and internal uh, mentors to chat amongst themselves. So let's say a mentor goes in and he has a question from the team and he may not have uh, experience in that particular language. He can come back and get another mentor for you. So that is just for our own internal communications. But all you need to do is just uh, come here to ask for help. And we have the mentors who will, who will uh, you know, help you just uh, and your you know uh, team team names. If you if you if you use your uh, user ID and just put your team team name or number there, that way it's easy for us to 
identify which team you're part of. Um, obviously, you've all been assigned your private um, team rooms, which is not visible here, but the mentors know the links to those team rooms so they can come in and join um, any particular, you know, there's like T1 to, we had set up 24 rooms, but right now we have only 22 teams, so 22 rooms. And um, and that's how we'll interact, but, you know, uh, just go feel, I think you've seen the webinar, many of you have kind of been interacting already, so I'm not going to bore you with that. But any questions you have, you know, this is the place to come in and ask for, for help. And then uh, we'll try to, uh, to, to come in and help you within your individual room. So feel free to just post your question and the mentors in the Discord channel are going to, um, you know, take, uh, it's a pool of mentors. So we're not, at this point, we're not assigning one mentor to one team, but as we go along, you know, we might do that uh, as, as we see the needs from the teams. Lata, anything to add? And of, of course, you know, you can do the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the discussions, screen shares, and there's also a voice chat. Um, let me see if I wanted to show, I'm, I'm assuming everybody knows how to do the voice chat. There's a text channel and you can go flip to the, um, to the voice. So if you want to interact on the audio part of the discord, you can do that uh, within, let me just show you that. So, so if I want to go here and you know chat with the mentors, you know this this is my uh, team talk, and then when I go to this, my I can start my video. I can you know I'm already connected on the voice voice with this particular channel, and then I can do my video. If I want to turn on my video, I can do a screen share. So that's how you do it. And then once you want to leave the audio channel, you can just X that, and you will just be able to text. So. Most of the teams I'm assuming will be on that voice voice part of it and where you can talk and 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 interact within your team room. Okay. If you have more questions, you can you can drop your questions um, on the Discord channel itself because you know we're going to be moving over to there. Okay, that's it. Um, anything Shailesh that I may have forgotten to no, I think you're good, Maniam. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Maniam. Uh, we'll post the links on the dashboard. Keep a lookout on dashboard. And see you guys back at uh, the final questions that we're seeing from the question and answer. I think one question which came was now are we meant to start coding coding yes uh, you can go ahead and join discord and start coding yeah is there any other question from anyone if not please go before, ahead and... before just jumping into the coding obviously you want to discuss about you know your problem you know spend spend a little bit of time just kind of on your so you know different ideas finalize on what you want to really work on uh, so that would be the first part. Don't just come jump into coding because um, then you'll realize that that may not be the best thing. So first brainstorm, if you already brainstorm and ready to go, yes, go ahead with, with the with the development. But for those who are starting and, and you know, just brainstorm among, amongst teams. And then if you need help with ideation, um, you know, we have mentors who can help you with that as well, not just coding. You know, you can just ask a question. Hey, we are thinking about this. Can you come and join our room? and uh, help us with this particular aspect, right? Yeah, that, that's a good uh, tip to share with the uh, kids. Uh, and then I think uh, feel free to reach out to the mentors in any process you're stuck. Like uh, Maniam said, even if you're stuck with the ideation process, mentors would be able to help you and guide you throughout the entire, the entire journey process of your hackathon. Yeah. So um, I just want to add one thing here is uh, I just looked at all the mentors. We have about 10, 11 mentors right now. So uh, Maniam, your point, uh, I think it'll be better to assign two, two teams per mentor. 
So they will be kind of round robin and you know uh, pop into those two teams and try to help with the ideas and projects in the first couple of hours. So that's how we'll do. I just assign the mentors to the different teams. So you know, so all the teams you will have a mentor popping in and out. Feel free to ask your questions. Don't be shy, as people said. Don't be shy. Get all the help you need. You know, and uh, we're all willing to help you here. Yeah, remember the judging begins at 4.30, so make sure you submit your codes before 4.30. Look at the schedule, which is there in the dashboard. It will be updated uh, if there are any changes. Uh, look out for uh, puzzles and uh, uh, trivia questions, which we send across to you. Uh, there'll be a contest. We'll send you the links. We'll send out the announcements in uh, Discord and uh, right panel over here. So all the best, everyone. Hope you have a good uh, day. Enjoy your hack.